Welcome to a new in the mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel. Not a lot of time has passed since our previous in the mail, I believe it was two or three weeks ago, but I have received a bunch of stuff that I would like to start using, so I need to do this video. I'm going to start with a series of cabling products, and the first ones are these uh, higher quality braided USB type B to uh, USB type A printer style cables, but I have them in two different lengths here. Uh, they have this nice uh, braided finish, higher overall quality and I tend to use this for uh, stuff like an older uh, AVR in circuit programmer, this is the Mark II which uses a type B connector, uh, a label printer uses a similar type of connector, my, monis my Dell monitors have a built-in USB hub which also uses a USB type B cable, so lots of uh, devices where I can use these. Then, because of modern devices which tend to include USB type uh, A ports uh, less often, but for guys like us, we still use a bunch of peripherals, uh, we still need to connect some uh, uh, USB uh, classic peripherals to the new USB type C ports, it's nicer when you don't have to use those tiny adapters or USB hubs for that purpose. So I got these uh, USB type B to USB type C cables um, for pl plugging directly into the USB type C ports. They're also uh, braided style. So for the same purpose, I can connect these types of uh, devices to newer laptops with USB type C ports. And then there is this guy which is just a uh, short braided style uh, USB type A to USB type C cable, which lately I use a lot of these guys because all of the uh, PCBs that I'm building feature USB type C ports and I basically need to connect them to a USB hub which sits right on my desk for testing and programming, so I need these short USB Type-C cables, I typically get these from Baseus, but this time I tried another company and I quite like what I'm seeing, uh, we got some nice construction here, lots of room to grab on th this connector when inserting into a socket, so yeah, same as always, there will be links for all of these items in the description below the video. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. Right now they're running their 5th annual PCB design contest, so if you have some PCB designs that you'd like to submit, why not do it for a chance to win one of the juicy cash prizes? You could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing, CNC machining and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website linked below. Also in the cabling department I needed some of this thicker 18 AWG UL1015 wire for various wiring jobs working on prototypes on my electronics workbench. And now for 20AWG or 22AWG I typically recycle those out of old ATX power supply wiring and I feel like I'm doing the planet a service when doing that kind of thing preventing them from going to a landfill but for the thicker 18AWG these are typically not present on a uh, ATX power supply unit so I ordered a lot of these 5 meter per each individual color uh, so these should last me a while. This is your standard 2.5 to 5.5 mm DC jack connector with 2 meter of white cable uh, which has markings that say this is a 2 by uh, 0.5 square millimeter uh, copper wire in here. This would make it okay up to 3 amps but just to kind of stay on the safe side I would probably use it only up to 2 amps in practice. Something like this would be very useful if you're uh, if you have a power adapter with the wrong plug instead of just replacing the plug you could replace the whole cable if the adapter can be easily disassembled and then you end up with with a nice uh, connector uh, with a strain relief at the end. And that's exactly why I got this to replace the, the uh, entire wire plus connector on a uh, good quality 12 volt power adapter. Next up I also got this little guy which is a uh, 4 mm by 1.7 mm DC jack to USB power cable and the plan with this one is to use it to power a Google Nest mini speaker directly from a USB port because by default the power, the power adapter that they ship with the uh, Google Nest mini it does not feature a USB port and um, a separate cable and because of that it uses up one extra socket on my wall dedicated to just that device and I don't like that scenario because I can have like a three or four port USB power adapter using up a single socket and I could be powering like three or four devices from a single socket. I could also be having a TV nearby or, or some other 
gadget that has a uh, spare USB port and I could power off of that. So I'm going to be trying this one out to see if it can replace the default power adapter that uh, is delivered with the Google Nest Mini. Next, let, let me show you some of the tools that I got recently and I'm going to start with this uh, iWIS Ratchet and Crimp tool and um, this is something that my viewers suggested I should try out and compare with the simple non-ratcheting crimp tool from iWIS. I reviewed this one in Vlog 425, so now I got the uh, iWIS 3220M model, which can crimp in the range of AWG 20 up to AWG 32. And now that's going to be the range where I do 100% of my crimping, so that's perfect for me. And it looks and feels very decent, uh, but I'm going to be trying it out in a separate video. So yeah, stay subscribed for that video. Uh, it was fairly inexpensive too, uh, especially considering that it's a more complicated uh, ratcheting type tool. But anyway, a link for this will be provided in the description uh, until I get a chance to review it. Next up, also in the tools category for PCB cleaning jobs, I got these uh, number two brushes and these feel like the perfect size for dipping into some isopropyl alcohol and then brushing on a PCB for some flux cleaning. And I know professional cleaning brushes use horse hair, but that stuff is expensive and I'm not willing to spend 30 or $40 on a small cleaning brush. And of course that using IPA will leave a nasty white residue when it dries up, but uh, there are better products out there for PCB cleaning. It's just that they're more expensive than plain IPA. So in the end, it's up to you to decide if you're willing to spend extra for that really nice cleaning action of the more expensive products. For example, the uh, best product that I have found so far for uh, PCB cleaning is this stuff, which I thought was expensive a couple of years ago at about $10 a can. But in recent events with prices skyrocketing on everything, this is now like $13 or $14 a can plus shipping. Uh, but it's the good stuff and uh, I, I really prefer to use this uh, because it's, it's, it just cleans so much better. For those of you located in the US, there are probably better local alternatives available, so no point in trying to obtain this exact one. Uh, for those in the EU, I get this from TME, link in the description. Next up, I have a few tools which are used for rope slicing, because I think I mentioned this before, but I recently got into kite surfing, and generally speaking, kite surfing gear is very expensive. Even simple stuff like the lines are expensive, even though the, the raw material, the actual Dyneema lines, for example, which is a company that makes these lines, are not that expensive to start with. But the final product that you actually use on your kite surfing gear because it is just cut to the right length and has like a spliced loop at the end, it costs double or triple than the raw material. So I figured at some point I should just buy the rope in bulk and make my own. Um, for that, I will need some tools uh, like these uh, threading needles that just help you thread the end of the rope back through itself to create a nice uh, looking loop at the end of a rope. So I got these, which are like these springy wire stuff uh, they're pretty long and, and I, I could probably use these. Uh, but then I also got this uh, like solid needle that you can use to maybe punch a hole. Uh, then I got these guys which are similar. They're thick solid needles and uh, they do show a picture of a, a threading paracord using one of these. But I don't understand how the paracord is attached because they do have this kind of thread at the end. But... Uh, I'm not sure how they attach the paracord to that, um, but I'll probably find out. I also have a bunch of uh, uh, general purpose thick sewing needles on their way to me, so uh, all of those should be helpful to get me starting uh, on making my own lines. I also plan to get something like a general purpose sewing machine, maybe a used model, but I just don't know what to look for. I mean, I've seen a bunch of like used uh, sewing machines for 100 euros or something like that on the uh, used uh, secondhand market, but is there a specific parameter of the machine that is important for sewing stuff like ropes, for creating these uh, splices at the end of ropes, or is it any general purpose sewing machine gonna do the job just fine? Please leave a comment below if you know this kind of stuff. 
Next up in the tools department, uh, this is an ATX Molex connector pin removal tool. And I need this because I've been doing some work on some projects recently where I needed some custom 8-pin ATX uh, Molex power supply cables. And I've been trying to get the crimps out of the connectors by using the classic set of pin removal tools, which I'm going to overlay on screen. Uh, everyone has seen these uh, so far, but the problem I had was that the, the tools were just a bit too thick to allow me to insert them into the uh, connector uh, on both sides of the pin at the same time uh, which is needed to uh, remove the pin because the pin has these two retaining clips on on each side um, and I thought purchasing a more complicated tool a more dedicated tool uh, would help but even with this one I find it very difficult to insert into the connector and I think just the perfect tool for this job would have one of these uh, pins slightly longer so that you could insert one of them first and then by uh, angling the tool on the other side you could insert the, the second pin and, and slide it in to release the pin. And they would have to be slightly thinner and slightly stronger uh, but I don't really know how other people are using these. They just seem near impossible to use and I end up breaking either the connector or the tools after a few tries. So yeah, it would be interesting to uh, hear in the comments below how you guys remove pins from ATX connectors and if there are uh, like better tools out there. Uh, but I'm not really interested in like very expensive tools that where you'd have to pay like a hundred dollars for the tool. Next up, I got myself one of these um, smartphone clamp things. Uh, for the tripod, this is similar to the one that I currently use on my tripod to shoot these videos. The one I currently have on the tripod is like a spring type, but after a while, as you can imagine, they do fail, plastic cracks, something happens and I need to keep spares around so I don't have to wait like two months to get the new tripod mount for my smartphone. And uh, this company, Ulanzi, seems to be making some decent quality products and accessories for smartphones. and. Uh, they have a bunch of different accessories in their portfolio so i figured i should give them a try it's not a, a spring type clamp this one ha just has a uh, release and it's kind of like a ratcheting type uh, clamp that once you secure on your phone it should hold it in place uh, i think i prefer the spring type clamps so i don't know how well i'm going to be able to use this but as a replacement in case the existing one fails it can certainly do the job just fine for a period of time until i can get a better replacement next up i got myself some hot glue sticks 11 millimeter in diameter i ran out of, i ran out of these and i'm always getting them in this state they're yellow when they're like their product presentation pictures show these nice transparent white sticks um, and when you use this stuff it ends up being yellow just like the stick whereas when you use the nice clear stuff it's being squirted out, out of the gun transparent clear similar to the stick at least initially so over time it they may become yellow but this one is already yellow so that's a bit of a disappointment for uh, getting them like this but I also ordered a different type these black ones which are supposed to be of higher strength like bonding better and they call these for industrial use so I very much would like to test these and I haven't tried them just yet but I'm hoping they are as advertised with a higher bonding strength because one thing I would like to experiment at some point is to make these 3d printed molds for a cable gland then I could for example DIY a USB connector and then pour some of this molten stick to make like a custom gland or a strain relief on that connector and I was wondering have you ever experimented with something like that let me know in the comments below how that went. And here's another interesting and useful item for the lab. These were very inexpensive and it's a set of small carabiners that you can use for anything around the lab. Like you can just use them to hang tools off your workbench. You can use them to keep a bunch of uh, tools with lanyards connected together. Yeah, general purpose uh, small carabiners which are inexpensive and pretty nice build quality. That was all for today. I hope it was interesting to watch and let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items. Same as always, links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below so do check them out. There are affiliate links and for every qualifying purchase you help keep these videos coming by generating a revenue for the channel. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply smash that like button which is free and helps a lot. 
I'll be seeing you next week.